A very good afternoon. It's a pleasure to address this conference. Innovation and integration are at the heart of our retail payment strategy. And they are at the core of the Eurosystem's own retail payment strategy too. And that's very understandable. Trade, commerce and an integrated single market rely on payments. A well-functioning integrated payments market is also the backbone of the euro, our single currency. Meanwhile, innovations in payments need an integrated payments market to thrive. So today I want to talk about integration and innovation in the European retail payments market and how the Commission has been approaching these goals with a keen focus on consumers. So let me start with integration and with our work towards strengthening the single European payments area. Another priority that we share with the Eurosystem's retail payment strategy. This month, the new regulation on instant payments in Euro enters into force. Instant payments allow money to be sent and received within seconds instead of taking days to arrive. And that has benefits for consumers who have instant access to incoming payments and it helps payers to avoid late payment penalties. It's good for businesses, especially SMEs, who can improve their cash flow. Instant payments also help the financial sector and the integration of SEPA. They pave the way for new, less expensive payment solutions across Europe, in-store or online. This regulation also presented an opportunity to tackle challenges, particularly fraud and the level playing field between incumbents and new players. So from early next year, all providers offering standard credit payments in euros will be obliged to offer an instant option. Payment service providers will have to offer a service to check that the name and the account number match. This IBAN name verification service offers added security for citizens and businesses against new forms of fraud. The regulation will allow payment institutions and electronic money institutions to directly access payment systems for the first time. Because integration means we should improve the level playing field between incumbents and new market participants. And that brings me to innovation. Our proposal for a payment services regulation builds on new access, improving conditions for innovative players. It strengthens non-bank providers' access to a bank account. And this is crucial to safeguard customer funds and obtain a licence. We have also revised the rules on open banking. The open banking market continues to grow, but not as much as we had hoped. Payment initiation services, for instance, which can increase the range of options for merchants to accept payments and lead to lower costs, are yet to deliver their full benefits. So we've taken action to help develop open banking, for example, clarifying the rules to improve open banking interfaces. We also want consumers to trust that they are truly in control of their own data. So we proposed introducing permission dashboards to give consumers easy to use control over who they give access to their data and what data is shared. Integration and innovation also require us to effectively enforce the rules, like the SEPA rules on IBAN discrimination. Nine years after the deadline for SEPA implementation, there are still companies and public administrations that refuse to make or receive euro payments involving non-domestic accounts. Now, we all know that this should not be happening. It hits citizens who move around the single market. It also hits new market entrants like fintechs that rely on the single market to provide their services. So we are working hard to combat IBAN discrimination. National authorities are primarily responsible for correctly implementing and applying EU law. The Commission is focusing our enforcement efforts on ensuring that national law properly equips local authorities to enforce the SEPA regulation. We are ramping up to our communications efforts to raise awareness and encourage citizens and companies to complain to national authorities or indeed to the Commission. We do get complaints directly from citizens and businesses and this allows us to gather evidence and see if there are systemic breaches of EU law in certain member states. Where appropriate, we take enforcement actions, including launching infringement procedures. 
I think it's fair to say we all know that we can only reap the full benefits of integration and innovation if our rules are enforced fully and consistently across the single market. We want consumers to benefit from an integrated and innovative EU payments market. And that includes tackling payment fraud. ECB statistics show that strong customer authentication has reduced some types of fraud. We can still improve how it works, including on accessibility. In particular, there needs to be ways for people who can't rely on a smartphone for authentication. As fraudsters develop new ways to cheat people, our rules to prevent fraud need to evolve too. We are seeing the rise of new types of fraud, like spoofing, where a fraudster impersonates a bank employee. The Instant Payments Regulation is introducing the IBAN name check service for Euro payments. The proposal for a regulation on payment services aims to extend this to all credit transfers in all EU currencies. The revised rules will oblige payment service providers to run fraud awareness campaigns for consumers and for their employees. To improve fraud detection, providers will be allowed to share data on fraud safely while respecting data protection rules. And we are increasing the responsibility of payment service providers when their email addresses and phone numbers are usurped by fraudsters. But telecoms, social networks and search engines have a role to play in preventing fraud. The European Parliament and the Member States are discussing what this should look like. We do need the right legislation to protect consumers from risks like fraud. And we as consumers need to be vigilant and to know how best to protect ourselves. Because, frankly, we are all at risk of being taken in by fraudsters. So being alert to what scams look like is a first step. And here is where financial literacy plays a key role as a complement to consumer protection. The level of financial literacy in the EU is low and it's even lower among certain groups, young people, women and older age groups. Young people tend to have lower financial knowledge and take more risks than older adults. And levels of financial literacy cannot be increased overnight, but we have stepped up our efforts in this area. Working with the OECD, we developed two EU financial competence frameworks for adults and one for children and young people. These give us a common understanding of what skills you need in areas like savings, investing, recognising frauds and scams. And so they are tools for member states and stakeholders to develop policies in this area. Consumers should be at the heart of EU policy on retail payments. That also relates to keeping access to and being able to use central bank money. In June of last year, the Commission adopted a single currency package. This comprised two proposals responding to the digitalisation of finance, the digital euro, and on the accessibility and acceptability of cash. As consumers and companies turn increasingly towards electronic payments, the digital euro will keep public money accessible in the digital world. For consumers, the digital euro will provide an additional means of payment available throughout the whole euro area. It will provide an extra choice to complement cash and private payments. It will offer both online and offline payments, with offline payments as private as cash. The digital euro could also be a catalyst for payments innovation. We want payment service providers to develop innovative solutions on top of the digital euro infrastructure, like pan-European retail payments, because today we only have national or international solutions. The digital euro must, of course, be well designed. And so we are working closely with the European Parliament and the Member States as the legislative process continues. We continue to work closely with the European Central Bank as it moves towards a decision on the possible issuance of a digital euro. In this digital age, ensuring that citizens have the choice of accessing and paying with cash is important, not least in terms of equal participation and financial inclusion. Our digital euro proposal is accompanied by a proposal on the legal tender of euro cash. And here we want to ensure that cash continues to be widely accepted for payments 
and that it remains easily accessible across the euro area. Our proposals on payment services already include some measures on cash, making it easier for retailers to offer cash withdrawals up to €50 Euros without the need for a purchase. And our cash proposal safeguards Eurocash as a means of payment, so that people will continue to be able to use it for their payments if they so wish. It also sets out what Member States need to do to ensure that cash is widely accepted and easily accessible with a lot of flexibility on how this obligation is to be met. This single market package will ensure the euro remains available and accessible as the common currency of the euro area. So to conclude, together we've achieved a lot to make retail payments in the EU faster, more efficient and safer. Our work with the ECB on the EU payments policy has been a core part of that success. The Eurosystem framework for oversight of electronic payment systems will continue to be strategically important to ensuring that payments remain secure and reliable. And here in the Commission, we look forward to continuing our joint reflections with the ECB and the Eurosystem on supervising and overseeing payment systems and infrastructures. These joint reflections become all the more relevant in a landscape of fast-paced development of payment methods and products, especially as some large payment processors become almost systemic. This intensive work in different ECB forums has helped already ensure that our proposals on payments and the single currency meet key challenges around innovation, integration and tackling fraud. One of our next challenges will be for Member States and the payment sector to implement the new rules effectively. My services in DG FISMA are of course available if any clarifications are needed. And we will continue to support the important work of those ECB forums. So thank you for the opportunity to address you and I wish you all a very productive conference.